Welcome back to Say Yes To You. This is my channel where I love to talk about things related to personal development, spirituality, meditation, things like this. Um, it's my intention that with every video, I'll be able to offer you a tip, a trick, some type of technique that you can begin to use to say yes to yourself sooner than later. Oh, it feels so good to feel like coming and, and doing these videos again. Um, I have been leaving my house. I, I work in healthcare and I continue uh, to show up for work. But um, as many people may be feeling, there's just something, um, there's something in the air, there, there's something in the energetic field that is very draining. So a lot of times I just feel, I just feel drained. But what I wanted to, um, to come and talk about today is something that just kind of um, has me fired up, but in a good way. Um, I would put this under the category of maybe an unpopular opinion, but because I feel strongly about it, I just felt like I'm just going to put it out there. So on Sunday, um, I was looking at Instagram and I saw where P. Diddy was hosting some type of fundraiser. Um, from what I could see, he was, you know, asking people to, to donate for, I don't know, something related to um, COVID-19. Now I myself clicked off um, rather quickly. Um, I'm from the 90s, so I, I remember um, the stories uh, that came out of Bad Boy. So I just felt like, you know, if I were going to be, you know, spending my money um, with um, a spokesperson, it was not going to be Diddy. So I thought about that and I thought about, um, you know, the different um, fundraisers um, that I've been seeing um, in efforts to raise money um, for frontline workers, uh, raise money for, for people suffering as it relates to uh, COVID-19. Um, apparently there was some type of um, a comedy special where, <laughs> where no jokes were being told, people were just kind of chilling, um, expecting you uh, to donate. Um, I see here that um, I think this coming Saturday there's going to be a takeover a takeover, if you will, that's going to include uh, Jimmy Fallon, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, and, and some other guy. And, and um, the list of uh, stars that are going to be entertaining you, and I feel pandering to you um, to get you to donate, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, I did make some notes. I don't know if I'm gonna really refer to the notes too much. Um, I just want to see what happens with this video. Um, the notes um, include a lot of um, citing for references that, that um, I feel uncomfortable, you know, really putting the, the, the information is definitely out there, but I just feel a little uneasy being the person to put um, the information um, out there. Um, but like I'm saying, it, it's just kind of, it's rubbing me the wrong way that um, celebrities are pandering, playing on people's emotions to get you, the 99%, to donate money um, for so-called um, relief from COVID-19. Now, um, one of the notes that I did make from the Economic Policy Institute that deals with um, the 1%. We often hear that, you know, 1%, the 1%, the elites here in the United States um, are the ones who are, in fact, in control of the economy. So now, according to this Economic Policy Institute, how much money would the average family need to bring in um, to be part of this 1%? Um, that number is $421,926. And it's gonna vary from state to state, but just think close to half a mil, close to half a mil to be part of that 1%. What I've been seeing online um, for the past couple weeks, maybe a month is a lot of people are, I'll use the word desperate. There are a lot of people who are desperate for that $1,200 or, or $1,500 stimulus check. We've heard it said multiple times that the average person living in America is, is operating on a check to check basis. They're you know, two or three paychecks from economic destruction. And um, by and large, we, we are seeing and hearing the stories of people who have been out of work for a few weeks now and, and can't make rent, they're missing mortgage payments, 
um, perhaps car payments, bills are really getting behind because you have to look at what little savings you have and decide how do I want to spend the money. Um, the average person is, is going to fall in that 99%. And um, what's really um, irking me is the idea that the average person who arguably doesn't actually have money or enough money to help people to help themselves to keep it real a lot of people don't even have the money to help themselves let alone the money to help the next person yet you are having your feelings played upon i would argue that you are being manipulated into giving money to a cause that actually doesn't require your financial input what you have to input is your well wishes what you have to input is your prayers but the idea of you know doing a cash app the idea of clicking on a button to donate in my mind is is counterintuitive how does this relate to the mission of my channel which is about personal development and spirituality well um what i would say is um the spirituality the personal development um that really falls in line with um an awakening or even the ability to um to look at yourself and look at yourself objectively to be able to kind of discern Am I participating in an activity because it's really in line with who I am? Or am I participating in an activity because um, it's what's expected of me? This is what good people do. This is what good Christian people do. Um, you know, a Diddy told me to do it, so I'm going to do it. Surely he wouldn't lead me astray. Or um, even this idea that you can catch yourself sometimes and realize that you've been operating um, from a place of unconsciousness. Um, do you ever catch yourself and say, what, what am I doing? What is this? Um, because you were actually sleepwalking and then you woke up in that moment and you realize what I was doing, I was not fully aware. Um, and, and I would say with the, the, the pandering, the asking for um, poor people essentially to, um, to contribute to these causes is insane to me. I want to tell a story about um, being in the healthcare setting. I've worked in the healthcare setting from Florida to Pennsylvania to New York since 2005. And here's what I know. I know that there have been patients who've come in. Let me say this, not frontline. I work in subacute. Um, so the patients are, are by and large, you know, medically stable by the time they get to me in my facility facilities. So the patient comes in and uh, they have MRSA. The patient comes in, they have VRE. The patient comes in or is there, they develop um, C. diff. These are going to be things that require PPE. What I know to be true is that there are times when there are no masks. The recommendations that you wear a mask before you go into that patient's room, guess what? There's no masks in the facility. Oh, you need gowns to go in there and see the patient? Guess what? There are no more of those yellow gowns. Like I say, I've been in healthcare since 2005, so this is not a new thing. This is not a new thing. Further, what I would say is um, many of the healthcare institutes that we are going to be familiar with that are you know in our towns and our states these are for-profit organizations what does that mean they operate to make money they're running a business so if you're in a place that has no linens for example which is not uncommon if you're in a place that doesn't have the proper ppe someone who's not me would wonder well how can this be why is this well, um, they're running a business. And I think that they're, they're, they're playing, they meaning the people who, the board of investors, um, the people who stand to really make um, more profit than just um, a salary. Um, those people and the people who are charged with, you know, helping to turn a profit, making it more efficient, um, those people are making a gamble. Um, how, long, how long can the facility function 
um, before we, we have to, you know, make this new order. Um, that's why I'm, I'm a little... I'm a little disenchanted. Um, I, I'm very much skeptical um, when I see. I'm a little skeptical when, when I see the response, as though um, we've not been here before, as though we're not been here before. Um, obviously, you know this whole thing of of a pandemic for sure. We in the United States, and even globally, we've not seen anything like this before. Um, but as far as this notion that poor people um, should bear the brunt financially for what, what could be what could be so easily resolved by a handful of the people who live in the one percent, to me is asinine. I'm just speaking of this event is called um, One World, no One World Together at Home which is going to be um, broadcast everywhere. Um, I, I personally will, will be um, streaming something as, as a means to avoid you know, any kind of um, network television. Um, I, I guess it's gonna be on Instagram. I guess it'll be here on YouTube too. I, I don't know. Um, but I myself will not be, will not be participating. Um, because I'm nosy, um, I went to the, the site and um, I went to the site after looking at the description, which talks about um, partnering with um, with uh, with large corporations here in the United States. I did write down some of the the corporations: Pepsi Cola, State Farm, Coca Cola, Johnson and Johnson, Weight Watchers, Procter and Gamble, partnering with these large corporations um, to raise funds for these frontline workers. But when you go to the website, there's a place where you can donate. And what are they looking for you to donate? Well, they have different tabs ranging from $25 to $2,500. And I thought to myself, well, $25, you know, how much groceries can I buy with this $25? Um, how much gas can I put in my, my car with this $25? Um, I saw there was a little slot where um, you can um, decide how much you want to donate. And I said, you know, let me try a dollar. Will they take a dollar from me if that's the most I have? No, error, <laughs> error. They do not accept my, my dollar if that's what I chose to offer. Um, the, the minimum amount that's being accepted is $3. So again, I say that to say these major corporations, um, these celebrities who surely are making more than um, 400 $29,000 per year, um, I, I, my sense is, and even honestly what I was thinking earlier is with these um, hospitals, if it's not a state-run hospital, for example, but private-run hospitals who are turning profits because the people at the top are, are making salaries to where, you know, they're not the people who are, you know, waiting anxiously for a stimulus check to arrive um, in the mail, if these uh, for-profit hospitals and the people who are at the top who are, you know, making decent money and have been, you know, making decent money um, for for some time, well, what are they doing to benefit the families of the healthcare workers who have perished? Um, what are they doing to procure um, the PPE that's so desperately needed? Um, what more could they be doing? And I'm not, believe me, I'm not saying that because people make more money, um, they are responsible for the rest of the world. I'm not in any way suggesting that we live in a communist state. But what I am saying is don't pander to poor people to solve problems that could be more easily resolved by a wealthier set is how I feel about it, is how I feel about it. And further, um, my sense is People, you know, that's that's such a broad stroke, but but people um, sometimes don't realize that they're being pandered to. And also, if you consider what are the choices that you've made to where you're dependent on the government to provide you with a one time, or maybe it's going to be two times, one time and another time in the summertime, but, you know, one or two stimulus checks what exactly is happening here 
what decisions that have I made that, that I'm in this position? Just a question. Just a question. Um, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much, that's what I wanted to say is, um, again, it may, it may sound selfish. Um, it may, it may seem selfish. Um, but it's just something to consider. It's something to consider. Um, you're, you're perhaps in, in a predicament where you are, um, less advantaged and, um, people are, are looking at your pockets, um, to solve their problem. Um, another tangent is with the celebrities that are asking for you to make your donations, um, think of your, your, your fave. And if your fave were to ask you to, to help out with money financially, um, has your fave ever said anything in the way of helping you make a profit somehow? Has your fave ever, you know, given any tips or, or tricks that you can use to, to progress in life financially? Um, that's something to consider as well. The person who's asking you for money, what are they doing to help improve your quality of life? What is it that they're actually offering you? Because what I would propose is um, a lot of us are, are, are subject to, um, there's magic happening out there, I'll just say it. There are people who are doing magic so that they have you under a glamour spell so that you're not thinking clearly um, when they present themselves. All you see is the glitz and glamour you don't realize, you know, what's actually happened to, happening to you. You're not really thinking. So that the next time, um, you know, you're so mesmerized uh, by, by your, your favorite entertainer, mesmerized to the point where you go into your pockets, just consider that. Think about, you know, April 2020 and waiting on that stimulus check the next time your fave asks you to, to buy their, their, buy my shit. Think about that. Oh. My tip trick procedure, what I wanted to offer you was something from uh, Byron Katie. Um, her work is called The Work. And Byron Katie um, gives us information. What did I do with it? Here we go. Byron Katie um, gives us um, a technique to use when, if and when, you know, we, we, we wake up and we begin to reconsider some of our behaviors. So the tip I want to offer you today is some four questions from Byron Katie to reassess, reevaluate your thoughts. Because a lot of times, I promise you, we're sleepwalking, we're under that glamour spell and not really thinking about what's good for me, what's good for my evolution as a human, you know, roaming this earth. The four questions are, is it true? You should be donating money to this cause. If you don't, you're a selfish person. Am I selfish? Is it true? Number two, can I absolutely know it's true? Let's run with the, the theme of I'm selfish. Can I absolutely know that it's true? Number three, how do I react when I believe that thought? Well, I know I don't have the money, but I'm gonna donate anyway, for example. Number four, who would I be without that thought? Is it true? Can you absolutely know it's true? How do you react when you believe that thought? And who would you be without that thought? Those are some questions to ponder. You know, in this instance, in any instance, just as a way of, of waking up, as a way of reassessing your thoughts and knowing that just because you think it doesn't make it true. Just because you think it doesn't make it the best thing for you. Ah, I'm glad I got that off my chest. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.